Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. And it seems like the marketing break that uh, Netflix Avatar has taken over the last kind of three or so days has stopped uh, almost a little bit unexpectedly. They just dropped a nearly minute long short trailer type thing, a couple of clips together, but it, it's basically another trailer. Uh, up on social media here. So here is the official Avatar Netflix uh, link here. Uh, it has the quote, which is actually Gran Gran speaking. So we do get that from the trailer as well. But I'll get into the screenshots in just a second, but uh, this will be linked uh, below if you want to watch it yourself. So it's actually pretty good because, you know, there's probably about, you know, like 10 to 15 seconds of new footage from this a couple of new shots one of which i find is a uh, particularly interesting that i do want to discuss but let's go through it here so i have the the key shots here as screenshots so we see ang waking up obviously i'm assuming that this is right after he's been brought back to the sun and water tribe after the whole boy in the iceberg uh, sequence uh, and we see that it kind of follows it up immediately with him, you know, getting dressed, walking out and sort of seeing the Southern Water Tribe itself, what, basically what's left of Wolf Cove uh, for the first time here. So nice shot there. This is where they do add in the shot from previous clips that we've seen of just the kind of hustle and bustle, I suppose, of just the, the Water Tribe, kind of everyone walking around. Uh, and then we do get to this shot, which is kind of nice. Uh, I guess Ang. Shortly after this, we don't know what exactly he's done between um, like this shot and meeting up with Sokka. But Sokka's like, who are you? Because obviously Sokka has seen him before from coming out of the iceberg. Who are you? And Aang, with a smile on his face, answers that he is Aang. So I like this. This is very much the kind of uh, protective, skeptical Sokka from the early episodes. I think you can see that in uh, Sokka's kind of approach, the acting here. Ang uh, being, you know, quite fun-loving, um, energetic, a bit goofy. Maybe he has been kind of playing around in the tribe with um, uh, everyone else, like we see in the opening episode, of course. Uh, then we cut to some Katara stuff, and we get a nice little sequence here of Katara making a kind of water ball. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Like uh, she brings up a kind of column of water, gets it sort of spinning. Let's the kind of column drop out so it's just the kind of uh, sphere of water, uh, and then she projects it at uh, Ang's back. So, is this meant to be like the water whip or like the first stage of learning the water water whip? The fact that Ang turns around and is quite smiley about it, I think, gives you the impression it's probably not that. But um, still, the fact that she's learned this uh, water ball and at least is something to uh, fire at someone is kind of interesting. So I'm guessing that at some point they seem to add in some waterbending training, waterbending scroll-like stuff, potentially maybe at the start of the Kiyoshi episode, while they're in the forest, in around the forest area, they maybe do some training. Maybe this is the start of a different episode, but because um, it's clearly not the water tribe here. This is, I guess, skipping ahead a little bit in terms of episodes, but they seem to do some training together. Uh, as we get the narration from Gran Gran over this, he may seem like just a boy, um, but actually, you know, he's the Avatar. So yeah, nice form here, and she <laughs> hits Aang in the back. Aang turns around and is happy that Katara has done a waterbending move. So that's kind of interesting just to, to see a scene which feels like, oh yeah, that, that's in line with basically, okay, they're doing at least something out of the waterbending scroll. That's pretty nice. Here is another look at Gran Gran, who is, of course, giving us this narration which includes this but he's much more he is the avatar so we get that bit as well of kind of grand grand being the one to kind of turn around and be like no it's important it's destiny that you found him basically uh, and that's where they add in i think shortly after this the whole scene of Sokka, sorry katara saying to Sokka, and um, we need to protect ang like that's our kind of role in this to help him and so yeah they include some other shots but then we get this. This is the shot I was talking about here. On Kyoshi Island, the Kyoshi statue, um, we get the sort of light coming out of the eyes of the statue. They hit Aang, his tattoo starts to glow, and I'm guessing this is where we get the scenes that actually include our actress who is playing Kyoshi. Because we know we have an actress for Kyoshi, um, and if you just base it off season one, we don't actually 
get anything with Kiyoshi herself. The episode includes the statue, includes the location of Kiyoshi Island, but we're not really told anything about Kiyoshi herself, apart from a little bit of the timeline stuff. So what's happening here? Because this, I'm guessing, is going to have to be one of the first past live scenes. Maybe they do something up front already in the Southern Air Temple. But this has to be one of the first ones that we get here. And I think everything they've talked about, um, maybe not in the most recent interviews, but before then, and even some of the other stuff has been that they are using the other material they have they're using the benefit of hindsight here of that Kyoshi gets developed more in later seasons and in material after this so that's why they have an actress for Kyoshi because they're doing stuff with Avatar Kyoshi I think they know that people latch on to stuff about past avatars and so they're going to make a big deal about scenes with past avatars so uh, is this how Aang has his sort of almost you know spirit encounter with uh kyoshi has a past life scene with her i'm guessing that is the case now what exactly are they doing here because this is obviously uh, at least a little bit different than we're maybe used to but it's not too different we're used to the idea of that like a statue rep representation of an avatar is a spiritual enough of a thing to kind of facilitate some sort of a connection. Um, if, you're, if you're spiritual enough, of course, you can initiate it kind of anyway, of course, but of course, this is meant to be early on and there needs to be this kind of required connection. That's the whole point of like 108 is that Aang has to go to the specific place that's important to Roku, Crescent Island, the temple, the Roku statue at a specifically spiritual point, the winter solstice. So I'm, I'm guessing there that's some of the slight alterations that are maybe being talked about here, that a past life kind of avatar state type thing can be more facilitated just through the sort of maybe like avatar relic style stuff. And like I've said in a few videos before, I think they're really going to emphasize the idea of like um, statues and stuff like that, representations of past avatars are viewed as being sort of... Um, you know, uh, important things that you can connect to in some way. So I I think, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about the timing. It seems to just be in the middle of the day. Um, and it's just Aang looks up at the statue and this happens because I, I'm guessing it's him seeing a proper Kyoshi statue in her own place for one of the first times. Now, one of the questions I have about, okay, what's going to happen here? Will it just be Kyoshi giving Aang general advice? Or are they basically bringing up some of the details from like 205, Avatar Day? Are we going to learn about Jin the Conqueror? Will he be referenced here? The peasant uprising in Ba Sing Se? Is any of the stuff from the Kyoshi novels? Is that stuff going to get referenced here in this scene? The exact detailing on that I'm really intrigued by because, of course, with the past avatars, I think we expect them mainly to focus on like Roku because he's the avatar before Aang. And then because the finale is so Water Tribe focused, whatever bigger stuff they're doing with Karuk, we expect some at least plot relevance to come into play there. Which would maybe leave Kyoshi as the, the three avatars that we're focusing on here as will Kiyoshi have the least amount of screen time? Like, how many scenes are they using the Kiyoshi uh, actress for? Because we have the speculation from um, also the, the initial trailer, the teaser trailer, that what if the way they're doing this is that Aang can only go into the Avatar state if he is effectively possessed by the spirit of a past Avatar? And so I'm not sure if this is necessarily happening in the heat of the moment, but because he's in the Kyoshi Island, Kyoshi's home, that this is somewhere where he can facilitate that connection if required. Uh, but he does it by basically channeling Kyoshi. Um, it's very clear that that is at least one angle on, I think, how they're maybe slightly changing how some of this past life stuff actually works. Um, so I think it's uh, it's it's interesting. Um Again, the specifics of how quickly this happens in that, like, are they just in the intro to Kyoshi, Aang looks up at the statue, and then we just straight away transition into a 
Kyoshi kind of backstory scene, it might be a little abrupt if they do it that way. I'm interested to see what the build-up is to it. But anyway, they emphasize it here during this scene. He is the Avatar is said over this sequence. And then we get a, a nice enough shot of Aang uh, flying in or around the air temples. Uh, I'm guessing this is maybe a rival at the air temples. It could be a flashback sequence. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Obviously, the highlight here is that you don't have to do this alone. And we get the scene that they've used in quite a few of the little clips over and over again. But they added in an extra shot of Appa here that I don't think we've seen before. This one where he kind of flies in from inner around here, closer to the camera. And we get a, a, another shot of kind of Appa in motion, which is uh, pretty nice. And uh, then we eventually do get back around to the tail end of this scene but they add on to it they add in a little bit that we hadn't seen before from the previous times they've used this clip uh, and that is uh, a kind of reverse shot showing everyone really really cracking up at uh, Momo on Sokka's head while he's giving this big speech about the team being together um, and yeah he walked into that one uh, as just the extra bit of the joke so there is the surprise nearly one minute full clip uh, obviously not all of it is new i highlighted all the new stuff in this one but i think it's pretty good i think this is the right way that they should maybe stick to with the marketing it seems like some of the comments in interviews with the vagueness is getting them into trouble whereas some cool bending shots and trailers uh, will increase the anticipation i'm just uh, like i said i continue to just be like i really want the show at this point um I'm, I'm happy to see a bit more marketing material and especially if they're going to be doing it like this where like maybe every couple of days we just get a few little extra shots. I still think we haven't seen that much of the show so I, I don't think they're overdoing it. Um, perhaps not a situation where I, do we need clips every single day. Not quite sure. Uh, at least at this point when we're still a little bit away, of course. Uh, we're getting towards the two weeks to go window. And uh, that's coming up in what, two days will be exactly two weeks to go. Maybe that's when they'll ramp up and especially for the last week. But, um, but that then brings us into the one non-Netflix news, uh, Avatar news for the video. And that is, uh, I was alerted to this. So on GameStop... They seem to have a pretty interesting merchandise item, especially if you are into the kind of cosplay or the sort of maybe higher end merch. What this is, as you can see here, is Avatar The Last Airbender Katara Cosplay Water Tribe Necklace Box Set. It is a GameStop exclusive. Uh, it's going to be $69.99 and it will release um, on the 27th of February. So it is a new up and coming item. And it is a set that includes what seems to be a, a higher quality than you would typically get from this sort of stuff. A Katara necklace, of course, um, along with a few other items here. It says here, includes one velvet choker with charm, so that's the necklace, one set of hair pins, one set of hair ties, one ponytail uh, clip, and uh, there are uh, what, only 5,000 individually numbered uh, versions of this uh, in existence. It is officially licensed. Um, and let's take a look at some of the other uh, images here. So you get a cer certificate of authenticity, of course. That's kind of nice. The, the box itself actually seems pretty good. Promo piece of art. Um, nice kind of display feature here as well. Um, like the blue on the outside as well. And it is going to be numbered, of course. So um, if this is something that uh, interests you... Uh, this seems like a pretty decent thing to get. Um, perhaps not for everyone, but uh, this is the sort of stuff I like to see them kind of just doing, like leaning more into sort of like the kind of almost deluxe kind of cosplay style items. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do more of this as things ramp up later on in the year. But uh, yeah, otherwise that has been the video. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on the new uh, trailer uh, and everything that we saw in it, as well as a uh, merchandise reveal here with the Katara necklace set. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and bye.